Hello everybody, today the purpose of this video is a discussion on my Apollo um, gate, my heavy duty um, gate and these actuators. These actuators are Apollo 816's and uh, their board's an Apollo 1050 and I'm running an Everstart deep cycle. I'm not using the Apollo expensive battery. Um, if you look up the specifications, the 24DC will work just fine. Um, so. Anyways, where my problem is, is I kept getting an air message, the wind's blowing this gate around. Um, I kept getting an air message, an overload message, so I was like, well, what the hell? I just bought this property not too long ago and got this gate operational, and it worked, I don't know, for a little while, and then I forgot that the board had to be in a standby, otherwise it'll drain your battery down, so I kept draining my battery. And I finally got that figured out why that was happening. What I'm talking about for you that don't know is you got to go through your functions and you go down to your uh, standby mode and you got to make sure that you have a standby selected. Um, I always put it at 60 seconds, but it was off because I just got done resetting everything. Um, it's a factory default. In factory default, it is not in the standby. So I'm going to put that now on 60 seconds. So now after 60 seconds, the board will shut down and not drain your battery down and allow these low voltage, low amperage solar panels to uh, charge. Which leads me to my next reason why I have a second box here. Is I'm going to put up um, 1,000 watts worth of solar on this system in order to... Uh, um, Put up a, a pole light here and run two deep cycle batteries um, together with the controller because the Apollo 1050 board will not allow you to push that much um, amperage back into the two batteries that you would need to charge to so you have to have an independent controller and that controller will be in here once that's all said and done with the second battery and they'll be chained together by conduit underneath um, just like that conduit for the keypad controller I installed is now there. Um, so anyways, I wanted to make a video letting people know what, how you test for a bad motor on one of these because I couldn't figure out if my board was bad or if my motors were bad and there's really no videos online describing how to do it. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how you actually test one of these. First off, what you need to know is you need to know that your, your ram rods are moving freely. You don't want your rods not being able to move within the cylinder. So whenever I was testing this gate originally, I took apart, if you take these four screws out down here, you can slide your sleeve back and forth and make sure that it's free moving. Um, this one was not. The seal was bound up. I think somebody had tried to service this and they had taken the rod out and they had taken it all the way out and in doing so they forced it back in this way with the seal and it cockeyed the seal. You can only put the rod in from that end forward pushing it this way because the seal sits against the inside edge. If you take one of these apart you'll see what I mean. There's play so you can get the seal in, in there but if you try to force the, the rod in this way it'll bind the seal. You must drive it um, that way to not bind the seal if you have to fix that. So I had to take it apart. Thank God the seal wasn't messed up. I was able to save the seal, get it all done right and redrive it the correct way with a rubber mallet and it worked just fine. What I mean by rubber mallet is you hit the the other side of it on this side going down through there. It's a lot like a motorcycle um, triple tree front shock if you will. Um, so anyways, those four bolts hold the sleeve on and the sleeve should be checked and make sure it can move. You can also get access to the threads. The threads should have a lot of grease on them. If they don't, you need to take it apart and re-grease it. I put uh, red and tacky inside my, my ramrods. It's good heavy duty grease and won't bleed out underneath a lot of heat. And it's cheap. Um, so then the next part about these things is you always want to make sure that they're sealed. And what happens is, is the little seals break. Let me see. There was one laying here. Yeah. Here's one. The little seals that come on these um, limiter, these are your limiter screws. These little seals here break over time. They dry rot. So I use O-rings. And 
you know you want to make sure and keep these in here so animals and water don't get in here because that's what's going on with the other one um, let me show you what I got a problem with so this is what the inside of them look like and in order to get them open you have to take off the four or I'm not sure one two three four five six seven screws I think two four five six six screws and the whole assembly will slide out um, what I have right now is my um, climb meter turned on to um, direct current and I have the probes inside of the wire bundle for the positive and hot for the motor the reason I'm doing that is I can't I start getting the air and this thing just says well, it was overloading well what's overloading is the motor itself is shot so if you come over here and the control board's flashing learn because I had to do a hard reset trying to see if I could figure out why it was just glitched but it won't even go through a learn until you have a proper motor on there so right now it's kind of in a stuck deal till I replace the motor but if you go to open and close it'll still drive your rods um, but if you watch let me see if I can zoom in over there If you watch, you get voltage. Oh, let me go back over there and make sure the probes are all the way in. Oops. All right. So I went over there and made sure the probes are back in. And whenever you try to open and close it via the board manually, see how you get voltage, but you get no motion out of that one. You heard this one over here moving. Let me go to the other direction. See this one here is the one moving. But that one ain't doing shit. So that's how you test to see if the motor itself is bad. Um, so that's what I'm dealing with. Oh, and I was gonna explain why it was critical that you keep those those uh, caps on. Well, what's happened to this one? This one was missing. I found sorry. I found one of the caps down in this dirt right here and I tried to find the other one but it's nowhere to be found. I even brought a metal detector over here and all I could detect was the coiled wire. Um, but it was missing both and so the problem was is that if you look inside the cubby hole here there's a wasp nest in there that just fell down. There's a wasp nest in there. Oops. There's all kinds of shit. And if you look at the motor, there's rust there. And there's crud on the back and the you can see where it's got water in it. So basically what's happened is, is it's probably oxidized inside that motor. You may be able to take apart that motor and clean it, may not. I'm just gonna order a new motor. It's old, it's original, but gosh, I wish I could get that thing to show. Show the wasp nest in there, but it almost looks like salt and sand. Uh, matter of fact, it does look like a salty deal. I don't know if that's from the insects. Oh, there we go. There's better light. But yeah, it looks like there's salt in there. Anyways, that's why you got to keep those those plugs sealed. So now I'll be ordering the motor. The limiter seems to be in good shape on this one. Everything's tight, the brass is tight. So if somebody goes and over tightens the limiter, you can also see the bug nest, the spider nest or whatever right there. But if somebody over tightens the limiter and doesn't know what they're doing, they'll strip out this brass one. It's riding and it's designed to fail that way. So you always wanna check and make sure that brass one's not loose and can slide by itself back and forth the, the this left and right's normal because it's threaded on there on that rod but uh, that's how it reads it that's your limiting switch there's one there and one there and the brass rides back and forth and it's a magnet and that would be on your retraction and that would be on your extension this one and the manual the wiring diagram that you have to get from Apollo because it's not online anywhere but if you call Apollo, they'll give you the wiring diagram for the uh, 
motor. Well, actually, take that back. The motor is online. But what they say to replace the motor is you pop off these cap right here. There's usually a cap that covers these bolts. You take those two bolts loose, and the whole motor will come out. It'll come out. And then they say to cut this, cut your hot wire. You'll probably cut your zip tie too. Cut your hot and ground and wire new hot and ground in. And then uh, you're ready to rock. I may go ahead and replace this switch too. This is a smart switch. I don't know exactly how that works. I'm just learning about this stuff. But there's not a lot of videos online of people even posting any information on these. And I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. Well, post a second video once I get it all running again. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.